Welcome back to Film My Watchlist. Think about untwisting and untangling these strings I'm in. And to lead a pure life. And look ahead in a clear sky. I ain't gonna get there. But it's a nice dream. It's a nice dream. Good Time is directed by Josh Safdie and Benny Safdie, following up on Heaven Knows What. That's not fun. Co-director Benny has a supporting role in the film alongside Robert Pattinson. The intense thriller is initiated by a bank heist gone wrong when Pattinson's Connie coerces his mentally handicapped brother Nick, played by the co-director Benny, to assist him in the crime. When Nick is caught by the police and Connie manages to escape, he finds himself in a race against time, attempting to get his brother out of jail at any cost. Pattinson is electrifying as the film's protagonist. He completely inhabits the role of Connie. With gaunt cheekbones, greasy hair and the dry skin on his face, he fits in seamlessly with the surroundings, to the point that you could run into him on the street without giving him a second look. Pattinson is a riveting and unpredictable screen presence. His desperation for his brother's situation, as well as his sincere fraternal love, is extremely authentic. This has come hard fought for the former Twilight heartthrob. Good Time is just the latest in a series of exciting career choices, including The Rover, Life, and Maps to the Stars. However, with this role, it seems like Pattinson has finally cast off the shadow of Edward Cullen. Benny Safdie, the co-director and co-star, is also brilliant in a breakthrough performance. Safdie carries with his portrayal of the mentally challenged Nick a quiet intensity that, like Pattinson's performance, assists in furthering the film's suspense. Both of these characters are lit fuses who seem either on the verge of burning out or suddenly exploding in anger. Buddy Duress, who starred in the Safdie brothers' previous film Heaven Knows What, is also captivating when he shows up later on in the story. However, good time success isn't merely down to the fine acting on display. The Safdie brothers, who I expect will be seen a lot more of, have crafted something fresh and exciting with the film. It's a kinetic, nail-biting experience. The often hip-hop style of editing calling to mind the kind of dangerous intensity in early Aronofsky films like Pi and Requiem for a Dream. As previously mentioned, this is down to the acting, but also the extremely effective use of long lens handheld cinematography by Sean Price Williams that is just on the right side of shaky. This claustrophobic shooting style enhances the adrenaline fueled scenes and throws you headlong into the brothers' anxious existence, with sudden zooms and tight framing often disallowing you the breathing space of wide establishing shots. For example, the juxtaposition between when Nick is speaking to a neutral character at the beginning of the film and when his brother Connie shows up in the room is effective and visually nerve-wracking due to this stylistic decision. Other than the Aronofsky vibe, the all-night suspense thriller template calls to mind the absolutely fantastic single-shot Victoria from last year. That being said, the film still feels utterly fresh and unpredictable. Good Time takes a peek at the endless possibilities of an all-night race from the law by showing what happens when the unspoken rules of societal expectation are bent by the manipulative Connie. An assortment of characters come in and out of the story, all being affected by this human wrecking ball's actions. Good Time is a prime example of why we frequently love to watch films with such unreliable and unlawful protagonists. These kind of characters are erratic and riveting, and by choosing to make Connie a lower class scam artist going from job to job instead of a successful career criminal, his flaws and desperation are utterly relatable. The script, written by co-director Josh Safdie and frequent collaborator Ronald Bronstein, pits Connie against the overwhelming system of law and order. Without making excuses for Connie's destructive behaviour and irresponsible life choices, the narrative still manages to construct a scathing indictment of a broken system in which police are overwhelmed and thus far too quick to lump suspected criminals in the same boat as those who are actually guilty. By having Nick be mentally challenged, the writers comment on a lack of respect and empathy for humans at the lower end of society. The film is populated primarily with low-income families and people trying desperately to make ends meet, which makes the stakes and the overall structure of their setting all the more intimidating and unforgiving. It's a world in which empathy is hard to come by, where people are judged on the surface level attributes which this film attempts to lend depth to. In the same vein, the Safety brothers and co-writer Bronstein are showing the detrimental effect that a dog-eat-dog, money-obsessed culture can have on the so-called undesirable and poor members of society. This hits home visually with the frequent use of bird's-eye view aerial shots, which makes the characters and their problems seem so minuscule and ant-like in their harsh and overwhelming environment. The film's supporting cast are extremely effective, 
through recognizable faces like Oscar nominee Jennifer Jason Lee, who we just saw in Tarantino's Hateful Eight, and Oscar winner Barkat Abdi from Captain Phillips, to the unfamiliar actors who lend an air of gritty realism to the developments of the story. An aspect of the film which complements the tension perfectly is the suspenseful, pulse-pounding, synth-driven electrical score by Daniel Lopatin, who won the Best Composer Award at this year's Cannes Film Festival for his work on the film. The score, like the components already summarised, makes the viewing experience a nervy and hard-hitting ride. Good time. It's just that. It completely lives up to the double meaning of the title, whilst delivering a brilliant and shocking cinematic experience that blows big budget competition out of the water. I'm going to give Good Time 4 stars out of 5. Have you seen the film? Let me know what you made of it in the comments below. As always, thanks so much for watching. Next up, I'll be reviewing Michael Haneke's polarizing and ironically titled Happy End.